All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Nuke Refueled mod, which is being made by user Zero Kerbal. And what this glorious little piece of fork looks to add into the game is sort of a uh, variety of parts geared towards smaller ships, a lot of these being in the sort of half meter size variety, and I kind of like that, just sort of a collection of small things. So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get here. Now let's grab a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake here, and then turn on janitor's closet, just leaving on nuke, and have a look at our first part, the command pod, the uh, CPT M1328G, which, if we pop on here, we'll talk briefly about the style of this stuff, as, uh, well, you can clearly see this is very much not a style alike sort of a pack. It's uh, very much sort of, um, I seem to keep coming back to describing it as old school sci-fi. A lot of the parts, in fact, remind me of something you might see in like the old series Babylon 5. And considering I grew up watching that show, I kind of like it. It may not be stock alike, but I find it fun. Now, as for the part itself here, it is, of course, a command pod with a minimum of one crew member to operate and a max of one crew member. It does, of course, have a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, the typical crew report, and electric charge. It does also have an interior, not a fully fleshed out one, but at least some form of interior, which is always nice to see. Now, next in fuel tank, if we zoom out a little bit here, we first have the LFT-05L liquid fuel tank, which holds liquid fuel and oxidizer, and is quite a, a long, a thin one here, and actually I meant to sort of point out when we were looking at the cockpit, notice the size. It is perfectly fitting to the top of the Mark I cockpit here, and that is the sort of radius we're really going to be dealing with for a lot of these parts, such as with this gigantic fuel tank, which is... Well, really isn't that gigantic, it's really thin. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice little tank with some fun texturing there, some nice uh, grating almost in the center. We then have a half-size version, the LFT-05S, still holding liquid fuel and oxidizer, just in a lesser quantity. We then have the LJFT-05 jet fuel tank holding liquid fuel. It then has a uh, another tank to go along with it for oxidizer. There we are, both pretty plain black exteriors, but the uh, top and bottoms have that nice sort of bulbous orange tank feel to it, very nicely made, I like that. We then, after that, have the RFT-05 RCS tank. I think this may be my favorite tank. Holding monopropellant, of course, and is basically just four large scuba tank looking things welded together. And I, I, I approve. Now next we have the XET051750 Xenon tank holding, of course, Xenon gas. And this, this was the first part that I looked at that actually made me think of the sort of Babylon 5-esque styling. And yeah, I like it, it's a cool little tank. We then have a much larger Xenon tank, the XET1-24K, which is basically just a giant keg of Xenon gas, and who wouldn't want that? There we are, let's chuck all these out, and head down to the engine category, where the first one, oh, the first one's interesting. It is the CHEQT05 ATQ thruster, which is powered by electric charge and quantum stuff. I, I just like that it's, you know, nothing specific, just quantum stuff. Now it does produce and store its own quantum stuff. It has a generator producing quantum stuff at a rate of 10 per second, and it can hold a maximum of one quantum stuff at any given point in time. It doesn't produce a whole lot of thrust, but considering it produces its own quantum stuff, and as long as you got good power, you can keep it going for a while and it'll produce 10 kilonewtons of thrust uh, max, which, yeah, not the greatest, but hey, it makes its own fuel. There we go, and that is uh, the 
the Q thruster. Oh, I like it. Now next is the EDF-05 ducted fan, which is a purely electric engine producing 102 kilonewtons of thrust and pops on right there. This one looking kind of Tron-esque. Now what I do want to point out though is the very cool looking shroud on the previous engine. A very nice indeed. Let's pop that one off because it does not have an attachment point on the other end. And let's look at the JE-05 jet engine, which will produce a max of 425 kilonewtons of thrust using the more traditional liquid fuel and air intake. And is, yeah, just a nice little jet engine there. Next, we have the JEVI-05 VTOL engine, which is an inline, well, VTOL engine with the air intake and outtake on a there. And it will produce a max of 161 kilonewtons of thrust. It does have its own built-in alternator. And, of course, air intake. And, uh, yeah, overall, a nice little VTOL for your use. Now the next, I don't know why I took that one off, but what the heck, we have the LFE-05F fixed engine, which produces a max of 90 kilonewtons of thrust with liquid fuel and oxidizer. A more traditional looking engine, in fact, it looks more or less exactly like the Q thruster, except this one uses normal fuel rather than quantum stuff. <laughs> uh, we then have the LFE-05G gimbaled engine, producing a max of 60 kilonewtons of thrust. Very similar looking engine, but has, um... Little gimbling things on it. Kinda cool looking. Also, very sci-fi. And who doesn't like that? Now next we have the MPAJ-05DM dual mode arc jet engine, which in one mode will use a small amount of electric charge and a small amount of monopropellant to produce 10 kilonewtons of thrust. Or you can go to the alternate mode where it'll just use a whole lot of monopropellant to produce 50 kilonewtons of thrust. And it is kind of a cool looking engine. I like that with all the different, uh, you know, outtakes going on there. And again, I really like these shrouds. I don't know why, but they just amuse me very highly. We then have the MPD TD2674 MPD Thruster, producing 80 kilonewtons of thrust with electric charge and xenon gas. Now, this one, of course, is a much larger engine, fitting with the 1.25 size of variety up there. And yeah, just a very cool little xenon engine. I say little, it's, well, a lot bigger than the other parts. We then come back down to scale with the 1337 MPD Thruster thruster, producing 6 kilonewtons of thrust with electric charge and xenon gas. And uh, there we go, just a fun little engine there. The shroud on that one, little off, little off. But hey, eh, it works. Now, next we have the REV-05, which uses liquid fuel and oxidizer to produce 20 kilonewtons of thrust. And yeah, just kind of a very small, compact engine there. And finally, we have the tiny girder-mounted gimbaled monopropellant engine, which uses a small amount of monopropellant to produce 3.5 kilonewtons of thrust. And yeah, real tiny. Really, really tiny. And fits well onto, well, girders, which we will see in a moment. And there we are. Let's take off all these. We no longer need them. Now in command and control, we've got some fun new RCS engines here. The first one, the BT-015T. A nice little a single point a thruster, thrusting that away. We then have the BTQ-015, a four-way thruster. We then have the HET-10L HAL thruster using xenon gas rather than the usual monopropellant for an RCS system. A very cool single thruster. We then have a four thruster block of it. Uh, there we are. I think this is one of my favorites in the pack. A very cool engine with the fun effect for the actual, you know, thrust of it. We then have an RCS nose cone, which will uh, flip over here to pop onto the bottom. There we are, a multitude of RCS engines on that cone. And then we got some more of those girder-mounted thrusters, with this one being an arc jet thruster using liquid fuel and oxidizer. I will actually need an attachment point to put that onto, of course, because it's girder-mounted. And then we have a girder-mounted MPD thruster using xenon gas. And, oh, yep, that doesn't have a detachment point on the other end, does it? There we go, pop that one off, and there we are, a uh, nice little xenon thruster. Beautiful! Let's pop that off. 
and head down to structural where we've got some fun parts in here. The first we have a buy coupler for the small size of the pack. We then have an inline tri coupler which just is really oddly elongated. We then have another tri coupler which is the more traditional triangular shape. We then have an adapter between the uh, small size of these and the normal 1.25 size. We then have a quad coupler which goes from the uh, you know our there we go. I forgot which size I was talking about here. The 1.25 size uh, down to four engines or tanks, if you prefer, of the smaller size of this pack. We then have a radial adapter for your engines or tanks to go on. Uh, very fun. And uh, then after that, we have a... I don't even know how to pronounce that. Coupler! Which is just... Oh yeah, we gotta zoom out for this one. It's a big one. There we go! Perfect for maybe, you know, going a bit overkill with lots and lots of engines. But it works. <laughs> it's kind of an odd part. But yeah, there you go. If you need a lot of engines to go someplace, there you are. Let's pop that off. We then have an engine pylon, which, there we go, nice and radially attaching there. We then, after that, have a hex node. There we are, so we can split off in multiple directions. Excellent. We then have a number of uh, couplers here. Or, uh, no, the this coupler and then a number of trusses or lattices, rather. There we are. So the lattice automatic coupler. There we go. Zoom in on that. And then we come into a different number of structural lattice spacers where we've got a small one, then a slightly larger one, an ever so slightly larger one, and then an even larger one, and if we keep going, even larger still, basically we just keep going up and up in size, and then the largest of them. Excellent. So lots of uh, choices for fun structural pieces. We then have a medium structural lattice docking node, which... Hold, hold, hold. Yeah. Hold. There we go. Kind of inside of the thing. I didn't mean to put it there, but okay. And yes, uh, nice fun attachment points on those sides. Ah, there's a much better place to put it. <laughs> <laughs> onto another one of it. There we go. And it can, of course, rotate if you so desire, which is kind of cool. I like parts like that. Then after that, we have another bent structural lattice here. Or, well, not another, just, you know, a structural lattice that is bent. There we go. And then after that, we have a tiny girder to half meter adapter. Now, this is good for adding in those girder mount engines and attaching them to these structural bits here. I do very much like that. Got the nice square spacing for it. We then have a tiny elbow girder section, which if we pop onto... Oh, God, rotate correctly. There we go. Nice little bent girder attachment. And then a smaller form one. There we are there. Always good. We then have a tiny girder docking port for, you know, if you really need small satellites or small space stations. Excellent. And then after that, a tiny exploding girder if you need a coupler to then go along with the whole thing. After that, we have a huge tiny girder. Excellent. There we go. And then we have a tiny girder hub, so we can break off into uh, multiple directions there. We then have a hub that also stores monopropellant right there. We then after that have a tiny girder octo hub, which we can pop onto there and has a number of attachment points all around. Then another tiny girder small hub, excellent, right there. Then a large tiny girder, a uh, medium tiny girder. Basically, we're just going in the different sizes again on this one. Then a minuscule tiny girder, and then a medium tiny wet girder, which holds liquid fuel and oxidizer, so a nice little tank inside of there. Let's zoom in on that a bit more. Excellent. And then a small tiny girder, a small tiny wet girder holding liquid fuel and oxidizer, and finally a tiny tiny girder. 
Beautiful. Look at all the girders. If you need structural parts, <laughs> oh boy, you've got options. Let's pop all that off. Nothing in robotics. In coupling, though, we do have a light radial decoupler there, which is just a large oval bit. Very fun. Uh, then after that, in payload, sadly nothing. In aerodynamics, we do have a shock cone intake. A lot of parts to go over today. There we go. A nice intake there. We then have a canard. Very nice, a straight canard. We then have a delta wing of a pretty decent size. We then have a glider wing. Look at how long that thing is. We then also have an aerodynamic pylon for attaching things to. Then a solar wing. There we go, very cool control service. And with electric charge, it is the solar panel. There we go, and it deploys. Beautiful. And then we have a tail fin right here. And finally, the uh, TB05, which I guess is like a tail piece or something. Not, not as descriptive as the other ones. And there we are! And after that, in ground, we got nothing. Thermal, nothing. Electrical, we got some batteries. Where we have the BAT 0504K battery, fitting the small size variety. We then have the 24K battery. And then finally, a 144K battery. And yes, just nice big batteries. And then in communication, nothing. Science, nothing. Cargo, nothing. And utility, sadly, nothing. But that is all of the beautiful parts for this mod. It's just a lot of interesting old school sci-fi esque parts. So let's go into orbit where I've made a absolute monstrosity of a ship to show this whole thing off. I kind of wish I would have used that solar wing though, now that I think about the, well, what I built. Instead, I used the delta wings. Hmm. At least with the solar wing, I would have had power. But yes, I have created a monster. <laughs> It's very weird. I like the bent girders. They amuse me. I Like I said, I really like this RCS tank. It looks fun. The HAL thrusters are great. I actually really do love these things. Even without them being not stock alike, I would use these in the normal game. They're just that entertaining to me. Then, of course, we got the nice Xenon tanks back here with the MPD thruster. And, of course, our nice uh, command pod up here, which, like I said, does have an internal view. Pretty basic cockpit, and it looks like you're just sort of in the void of space without a windshield which is kind of unnerving but hey there you go you do have that interior view of some form and let's start up the engines where i've got the dual mode arc jet ones and let's waste all the mono propellant there it goes with some nice effects let's turn actually we already do have the rcs on notice the cool rcs thruster uh effects here kind of hard to see actually considering it's sort of a light blue i'm going to throttle down so it's not quite as noisy but yeah if we get real close to these you can see this sort of blue streak particle effect coming off i very much do like those from those hal thrusters i think all in all those are probably my favorite parts in this entire pack and of course we do have the powerful thruster engines over here which actually aren't really so powerful throttle up which do of course have their own purplish particle effect and there goes all my electric charge also probably why i should have gone with the uh, solar wing for power but yes uh, that is uh, the nuke refueled mod a fun little set of as i have mentioned several times seemingly old school sci-fi inspired parts which i very much have enjoyed it's just an interesting cool little pack of things so if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself i would certainly recommend you give it a try and you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual but that is gonna be it for this episode my friends i hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one